Hello everyone, welcome to Bullion Bavai. Let us understand some financial ratios which we can use in daily investing life. Now what are financial ratios? Financial ratios are relative magnitude of two or more variables and they are account based variables and there are market based variables. Which are the account based variables? They are earnings, sales, profit ratio. And what are the market based variables? There are stock prices, right? Then, first we'll start with profitability ratios, okay? First one is the profit margin, the gross profit margin, or you can take as profit before depreciation, interest and tax. You can also take earnings before EBITDA, EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. So this will give you the health of the company and then the management efficiency. The second one which will be profitable ratio is the net profit ratio. Gross profit ratio or EBITDA ratio will at the beginning of the entire accounting uh, statement cycle and then net profit ratio will be at the end of the entire accounting cycle. The net profit ratio is takes into account all the company's costs. The net profit margin will have to calculate net profit margin is profit after tax divided by revenue. It measures the percentage of sales the company keeps in profits. Then in both operating margin, net profit margin, the higher the better. So you will have to compare within the same industry, you have to compare uh, companies within the same industry and then see which of the companies within the same industry are doing much better. Then you have effective tax rate. You will have to see how the tax is being managed by the companies. So, even though the tax rate given by the government is the same, the companies have methods to manage their tax rate. So, what is the effective tax rate that they are paying? For that, how will you find out effective tax rate is the average rate at which the company's profits are taxed. So, marginal rates vary from companies. There are many deductions and tax incentives. You will get to know what is the tax incentives he is using. It is an easy way to summarize how much the company is paying as a tax. Now, Profitability ratios, the other one regarding banks. Normal companies, manufacturing companies differ from banks because for banks, what they sell is money and what they receive is money, right? So, their, naturally their income is always only the interest margin. So, let us see, the first one is the net interest margin. What is net interest margin? Net interest margin is the gap between the interest that they pay on deposits and the interest that they charge on their advances. So net interest margin will be interest income minus interest expenses divided by average earning assets. Now next one is net NPA to loans, it is also specific to banks because the money that is given out should come back. If it does not come back, then it will not work for the bank neither for the investor. So all those uh, hula bla now we have about public sector banks having high NPA is because the money that is going out as advances, if it becomes NPA does not come back and is not available to the bank for re-lending. So it reduces the company, the capacity of the bank to earn interest. So net NPA to loans is equal to net value of non-performing assets by the total value of loans. If this ratio is high, then the uh, bank has to write off and then that writing off will take away its capital and will reduce its future profitability. Next in the normal companies, what are the return ratios? Under the return ratios, one of the most important ones return on equity because you are investing. When you are buying a share in the market, you are investing in the equity of a company. And because you are investing in the equity of a company, you should know what is the return on that investment or the return on equity that you are getting. So, return on equity can be uh, calculated as net profit by shareholders funds. Now, it shows how productively a company uses its equity capital. Now, what is the limitation that it does not take into account debt capital? Now, what is the use of debt capital? Debt capital normally adds to the muscle of the company and while reducing in the cost of servicing that money. I mean, if, it, if a company has got good debt capital and it also has a good interest coverage ratio, then it is much better than having no debt at all. But still, in our normal, normal parlance, in our normal understanding, a company with zero debt is considered superior to a company which is having more debt. Okay? Next one is return on capital employed. Now, when because the earlier uh, ratio return on equity takes care of only equity, now we can have return on both capital uh, equity as well as debt. So, return on capital employed is net operating profit after tax, okay, no PAT divided by capital employed. 
Now, no pat is uh, is calculated as profit before interest and tax multiplied by one minus tax rate. Now, capital employed is calculated as shareholder funds plus total debt. Now, return on capital employed (ROCE) provides a more complete assessment how well a management is deploying its capital. Now, return ratios and then return on assets. What is the return on assets? It will include all the assets on the asset side of the balance sheet that are being employed to generate your income. So, return on assets will naturally give you net profit divided by total assets. It will give you the capacity of the use, the efficiency with which the total assets are being used by the company. So, we will include all assets and we will calculate ROA including productive assets and non-productive assets. So, if ROE compared to ROA, in ROA is less than ROE, it means there are more non-productive assets than productive assets. Then debt ratios, debt to equity one of the major ratios that includes your debt. Now, debt to equity uh, is called the leverage, how much leverage a company has. Okay, then debt to equity is equal to total debt by shareholders equity. Using a higher level of debt one by one, it increases risk and its interest liability will go up. But debt is cheaper because it is tax deductible as an expense, the interest is tax deductible. And then the return on uh, investors or the equity holders will increase with, by way of increased debt. So it has got both, it is a uh, weapon that cuts both ways. Next is interest coverage ratio. Whenever you are talking about debt equity ratio, you must talk about interest coverage ratio. Interest coverage ratio measures how easy it is for the company to meet its debt obligations or how it pays its interest. So interest coverage ratio is equal to EBIT, earning before interest and tax divided by interest expense. And uh, if this ratio is uh, less than 2, it means the company is finding it very difficult to finance its debt. And if it is more than 5 or 6 or 10, it is very easy for the company to maintain. Now, next is free cash flow to debt. The other way to is to com uh, compute how much free cash flow is there. What is free cash flow? Cash flow is a company, uh, uh, the cash generated after paying its capital expenditure. It is operating cash flow minus capital expenditure. Now, cash flow is more difficult to manipulate than earnings. So, free cash flow to debt is equal to free cash flow divided by total debt. This ratio measures the ability of the company to finance its debt obligations out of the free cash flow, no, unallocated cash flow. Then current ratio. Current ratio is a liquidity ratio and uh, it measures the ability of the company to meet its short term obligations. The current ratio is equal to CA by CL. If this ratio normally for banks they take it as 1.33 out of which uh, 1.33 is supposed to come from long term uh, sources and one at least should come from current assets and current liabilities. So, if it is uh, less than 1.33 then the company is in for trouble. So, short term liquidity will indicate less than 12 months or this is the short term liquidity will be useful when you have current ratio above 1.33. Next is asset utilization ratios. This is fixed asset turnover first. Fixed asset turnover measures the company's ability to generate sales relative to its fixed assets. Fixed assets means the property, plant, equipment, land, etc. So, fixed assets turnover ratio is the net sales divided by fixed assets. A higher number indicates the company is more effective in using its fixed assets. This is a common ratio used for manufacturing companies because fixed assets are a major portion in uh, that case. Asset utilization ratios. Next one is then one of the asset utilization ratio is the inventory days. Inventory days represent the average number of days the goods remain within the company in inventory. So, inventory days is equal to inventory by cost of sales into 365 days. The lower figure is better because it shows that the company is able to roll over the inventory very fast. Now, average inventory is the relevant time period to use. Now, receivable days and payable days. After the inventory days, the more important ones are this number of days of receivables and number of days of payables. Receivable days is equal to accounts receivable divided by revenue into 365 days. Similarly, payable days is accounts payable divided by revenue into 365 days. Now, the receivable days should be as less as possible and payable days can be as high as possible because that way you will be able to take money from the market, roll it over in your company more number of times and then make more money for the company. Next is operating cash flow to sales. Operating cash flow to sales measures how well a company is able to turn its sales into cash. Okay, Why whether the sales are remaining in credit sales and debtors only or they are converting into cash. Operating cash flow by sales is equal to operating cash flow divided by revenue. Then the company sales we should see a corresponding rise in the operating cash flow. Whenever you are saying 
operating cash flow vessels then as a trend the cash flow should also increase and then it is not there then it is not being and the sales are not sustainable the answer is sales are not sustainable next is the cash flow ratio free cash flow to operating cash flow free cash flow is equivalent to what is left over from the operating cash flow after the capital expenditure because you see most of the capital expenditure is financed by internal cash flows internal cash generations and this internal cash generation if we think it is useful for paying your current debts we will be wrong if capital expenditure is also made from this internal cash generations so in that case we will have to see this free cash flow by operating cash flow is equal to operating cash flow minus capital expenditure divided by operating cash flow the higher the ratio the greater the financial strength of the company new business have got uh, uh, have high levels of capital expenditure therefore the ratio will be lower then cash flow dividend payout dividend payout is equal to total dividend by net profit now there are two theories to it a company which uh, pays out dividend is good that's one theory holds the other theory says the company which pays out less dividend is good now my uh, contention is that the company which pays out zero dividend is much better because in my experience the uh, dividend that is paid out is on the basis of the face value whereas the money that we get we calculate the dividend yield that we calculate is on the basis of the market value that you pay for the share so when you convert from the face value dividend to the market value dividend your uh, yield becomes very very negligible and it is of no use to either to us or to the company i have seen cases where you spend 25 rupees to pay a dividend of 2 rupees 2 paisa so that kind of a wastage of company expenditure can be avoided if zero dividend companies can come and they can use this money better in their own company generating 40 to 50% of return from the finally for the investor only because he can sell it in the market and get a higher price next is valuation ratios price to earnings is the most equal and easiest price to earnings all our markets are valued on price to earnings all our companies are valued on price to earnings and price to earning is nothing but market price per share divided by earnings per share now a high pay pe stock need not be expensive because if you have a higher growth of earnings than the price that means your potential to earn is much higher uh, is higher than the price uh, higher price that you pay it may be beneficial to pay then you have a price to book value ratio price to book value is normally in the book value is the net worth and if the price to book value is less price to earning even if it is more if the price to book value is less that means you are still paying less compared to the inherent value of the company so you can go ahead and buy then ev2 ebitda that is economic enterprise value and is the sum of market capitalization debt minority interest preferred shares less cash now it will it will indicate the takeover value of a company so ebitda is the interest before interest tax depreciation and amortization ev by ebitda ratio is used to determine the company's value similar to pe ratio the valuation ratio is price to sales the price to sales ratio indicates the price per share relative to the sales of the company so price to sales is equal to market price per share divided by sales per share it indicates what are we paying for the given level of sales for the company so sales are more difficult to manipulate than earnings so but unfortunately price to sales does not give much useful information then dividend yield dividend yield is dividend per share divided by market price per share dividend yield will indicate whether you should buy a company share for the purpose of getting the dividend next price to free cash flow ratio price to free cash flow ratio is the market price per share by free cash flow per share it is used as an alternative to pe ratio so thus uh, in conclusion what we can say is that ratios if you can master well then you will be able to use them in uh, uh, screener uh, sites like google stock screener and then identify some ratios which you think are uh, minimum that is necessary for your company and then apply it to all the companies that are available in the market so that you will be able to get a best companies based on the financials based on the fundamentals on which you can take uh, for your investment decisions thank you very much